Well, hey, and welcome to part two of the slideshows for slow flight exercise 11 in the flight training manual. So we'll just be continuing on the skills that we learned in the first section for slow flight. And if you have not yet watched the slideshow for slow flight, the previous one, I highly recommend doing that now as I will not be reviewing any of the material that is contained in that slideshow. So now that you know how to enter and maintain slow flight from straight and level flight, we're going to be looking at increasing your maneuvering skills in slow flight by adding climbing and descending, turning the addition of flaps and flying at your minimum controllable airspeed. All right, so just getting set up here. First, you do your safety checks, then you get yourself set up in slow flight. Line up on a geofix, car heat out, reduce power, raise the nose, trim full up, add power to maintain altitude and control for yaw. And since you've had some practice on this now, keep that stall horn going and for the entire time during these maneuvers. So to practice climbing and descending in slow flight, you know that you want to keep your pitch relatively constant as this controls your airspeed and you want to keep your airspeed about five to 10 knots above the stall speed. That's right where that stall horn starts to activate. So to climb, you will need to add power. Adding more power will cause that nose to pop up and to yaw. So you need to anticipate that and prevent those two movements. The opposite is true for descending. You'll need to anticipate and prevent those movements as well when you remove power. This is an eyes out exercise, so do not fixate on the instruments, rather rely on the stall horn for your signal of your speed range and just glance at your instruments periodically to vary verify your precise change in altitude. So in exercise nine, we looked at how decreasing airspeed is going to decrease the radius of a turn. Turns in slow flight are a really good example of how this looks. When you first attempt to turn, keep the angle of bank between 10 to 15 degrees, no further. Also, plan to roll out of the turn approximately 10 to 20 degrees before you reach your intended heading. In slow flight, the aircraft will want to turn rapidly with a relatively sh uh, shallow angle of bank. Also, as you're likely already using a significant amount of right rudder, you may require little to no additional right rudder to remain coordinated in a right-hand turn, and you might require only slightly less right rudder in a left-hand turn. Next, we're going to look at adding flaps. And this should be done in stages, so 10, then 20, then 30, then 40 degrees if you have it. What you'll notice is that each time you bring in more flat, you're going to have to hold the pitch while you bring them in as the nose is going to want to lift, bringing you closer to a stall. Once you bring the flap in, you'll also notice that you'll need to use more power than you did before to maintain your altitude and that you will also be able to fly even more slowly than prior to bringing in the flap. So to recover from this state, you follow the exact same steps as always with one exception, which is now the flap. So first thing, bring in full power, car heat off, and hold that pitch, prevent any gain or loss of altitude. Control for yaw, and then bring the flaps up, but in stages, 10 degrees at a time. Maintain your inputs until cruise airspeed is achieved and you're back on your original altitude. Some common errors when adding flap or recovering from slow flight with flap is not doing it in stages. So just make sure that you're being careful with that. Always do it 10 degrees at a time. For turns, without practice, turns in slow flight can actually be quite challenging with the mushiness of the controls and the high pitch of the aircraft. So don't be too hard on yourself, but watch for things like not maintaining your airspeed or your bank angle, improper rudder use, rolling out too late, and do not fixate on your instruments just glance down at them while you keep your head up, using your peripheral vision and scanning for potential traffic while you turn. As always, if you have any questions about the material that we covered, just jot them down and then bring them to your next lesson. Bye for now.